Nå ja. Så. Hey, good morning, good afternoon, and um, good evening to everyone. Um, we're not in the usual format, as you can probably tell. I'm thrilled to have a guest today, Anders Tidell, of um, True Temperament. Um, I've been thinking about doing this um, series of, of shows under the heading Meet the Maker, where I can meet someone um, that I admire and who has come up with something um, fun and amazing and interesting and uh, bring that all to you. And um, this is the time to, <laughs> to do so. And we'll be taking live questions as well later on, uh, but for now, mm. welcome Anders. Thank you very much. <laughs> Nice, um, to, nice to be here. It's a new, uh, new uh, location. Never been here before. <laughs> no, and um, I found out just uh, a couple of days ago that you were planning on visiting Uppsala. So, yeah. how could we not take this opportunity? Absolutely. Um, but um, I'm sure everyone that's watching know what true temperament is. But um, I thought I'd begin by asking you, um, what is it and what does it do? And uh, I, we, we do have uh, this guitar, you, you can hold that and yeah. explain. Oh. And we do have this way of um, showing a little bit in, in detail. Um, so it's these, a lot of people call it just the, the squiggly frets, uh, mm. but... Um, yeah. Oh yes, this is a. I used to call this a scale. It's a. It's one of Strandberg's half fan fret. <laughs> because it has a straight, uh, straight angled, angled uh, zero fret there. It's a really nice guitar. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, it's a true temperament. What it is uh, is that. Um, um, I do adjust. Uh, every position for each string of the fretboard. If we just compare it to a uh, straight fret, uh, so is this this is measured like all the pitch, all the frequencies are actually measured on each spot. On straight fret, uh, it's an uh, some probably many knows about that is a, a, a theoretical thing. So it's will collide with the reality because uh, luthiers have been doing uh, fretting for many of hundreds of years but they have been using mostly some mathematical formulas just to determine what to put frets uh, but what I do I just uh, we, I call it that I work with the reality of what exactly sounds when you play so I ended up with, I mean, this is a very long story, just to, so I just have, have to pick up, you know, the most uh, telling details here. Yes, but I've been, been uh, doing experimentation with this for many, many years. I began uh, on my own guitars once back in time. And uh, just to start with, I think uh, what I just uh, figured out later that I started with it. I didn't know anything, you know, about you know the, the nature of notes and you know the, how it uh, to to construct a temperament, you know. So, uh, but I had to start from the very very beginning. Just I just dismantled all the frets on my guitar that I had at that point, yeah, back in time, and uh, put on some uh, some uh, advertised tape. Like so, you can just put up some supplements small mini frets on each uh, under each string and note position and be able to move that around you know just to to, to check to check everything that you know so put every note you know that i wanted to have it you know, so but you know, just to discover that it wasn't that easy because you have to uh, one note could be uh, in, in different situations, you know, in different chords and you know stuff. So, so I have to think in like in a 360 degree perspective, you know, on each note. 
But I did it easier from the beginning. I just I added more notes, more frets, just to cover up those bases that you know uh, that I needed to to make the sound. But to make a long, very long story shorter, uh, is that you know is to begin to clean up the things. You know, I didn't bring any of my originals today, just so I could show it. I can do it sometimes. You know, maybe if some are interested about to see it. But yeah. Anyway. So I just uh, cleaned things up, I just determined that I won't put like 31 frets that I had, you know, on, on my original no, uh, neck. So 31, 31 uh, frets are quite hard to play you know, to, to get around. So we began to wonder just to, uh, if I take 12 frets within an octave and try to do the very best I can with, that, with those, you know, too. So, after many years of experimentations, so here we are. And this but particular... So, so oh. the, the, the reason is, is really that, like the, the rel relative um, intervals mm. aren't equal, it's not 12 equally spaced intervals. No within the scale? No, it's, it's uh, this particular temperament or that we have today. I did many, you know, so yeah. th this is a slightly modified, you know, from equal temperament, slightly, yeah. just to fit the guitar. So Because it, you, if, if you were to do it mathematically, mm -hmm. does it then become specific to one uh, like one mode or, or one one particular tuning? No, it's a, with the math, mathematical ways it's like in the theory. So we have so many, you know, things to consider, you know, what I have discovered over the year because I've been working with it manually all the time. I just uh, don't rely upon numbers, you know, it's, it's the most important how it sounds when you to play. So, okay, this will be here. This sounds good there. Okay, yeah. then I measure it, you know. The distance yeah. just to be able to to uh, do a CAD, uh, you know, program or yeah. like a CAD file. Because from if, it. if so, uh, oh, sorry, but then uh, okay, it's on that distance. Okay, but it sounds good there. So yeah. you, all the you know why and you know why it's there. So I don't know. This is the physics, you know. Yeah, yeah. because if then, if if you just did it mathematically on the guitar. Mm. It, it wouldn't sound right. No, I correct? don't know. No. This would be like, oh, yeah, then we are back, you know, like, you can yeah, measure it out, of course, you yeah. know, for different frequencies, what I used to have come up with. But uh, it doesn't make sense to, why? Yeah. Just because now I, I think also the, this, the, the true temperament fretting system now, mm. it also compensates for like intonation issues. So it's, it's, it's like, Perfectly optimized for one, basically string gauges. No, not necessarily. I was in the in the beginning. I was quite restrictive you know, to to tell what kind of strings or like string gauges to be used. You know, with it. But up to up to the, today, up to now, I mean, I also have had um, many customers just that have different needs, like in string string gauges from zero eight to zero fourteen, like you know. So it's it's also all about to, to, to adjust it on the bridge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I managed to get all the guitar that I have been you know, put together, you know, with thick string or thin string. I made it work, you know, mm -hmm. just to make the intonation here at the bridge. So if I would put, put, put a, like a wound, wound third here, uh, what would happen, you know, is that this, this uh, saddle would be moved forward, you know, Mm -hmm. A little bit yeah. too, too. That's what used to happen. Yeah, I I often summarize when when someone asks what what true tem temperament is. I I will explain it in in the context of our guitars that are ergonomic to your body. Mm -hmm. I mean, they'll help your shoulder and your yeah. wrist. This is ergonomic for the ears. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah it's yeah. because uh, I mean, it's one one more thing since uh, back in the days when I did a lot of rehearsals, you know, with my band back then, yeah. and we did. Uh, I, I did my guitar and the bass player uh, that I had played together and we, we made his bass too. Mm. So and it was very loud too. So it's uh, really important to get it, you know, in tune. Mm. 
the way I wanted to play back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing, the reason why I started with it. Yeah. But are, are there particular like problem chords that you can illustrate that sound extra yeah. good on this guitar that wouldn't yeah, sound good? Yeah, there's one thing, okay. Uh, oh. Oh, yeah, yeah, there's a little bit of sound. Okay. One is okay. One 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 common thing, easy thing, easy easy thing to explain. Like it's the one thing. If you, if you hit a C there and an open G, and or you make a fifth, or then be able to play a E major. Yeah, that's one thing. At the same time, you play an A. Probably okay. <laughs> this is a common point, you know, that many guitar players struggle with. Yes. This, this, uh. yeah. this, 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 this is many places on the fretboard. Um, yeah, um, that's the one thing, you know, mm. this is... But what, what is your background b before you came up with True Temperament? What, what, what did you do? Yes, um, I have done so many things, you know, <laughs> somehow <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, at the time when I've been, I was really intensive, you know, with, with my prototypes. I'm working at, uh, working, um, the teeth. Oh, really? Yeah. But not like a dentist or where I used to construct teeth you know, in the laboratory. Oh, so nice. I had a lot of uh, tools there, you know, that yeah. I used. So the, at the end of the day, I took away all the teeth from the, from uh, <laughs> from a bench and so put up a guitar, begin to so form the frets. So but, you you have sort of an engineering background. Yeah, how can I say? Not like uh, from school. I was uh, mm. uh, like a self-taught person. Yeah. Yeah. So well. it was. Uh, I mean, I, I can relate to this myself, having mm. just grown up tearing stuff apart and putting them back together. That mm. I mean, nothing is impossible. So if something is wrong, you try to fix it. Mm. Kind of yeah. Thing. And that's yeah. so. Th is that how it started? Is it just? My yeah. guitar isn't working. Let me fix it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, as I said, I didn't have any knowledge, you know, about you know the temperaments and stuff when I started. You know. So um, uh, I was really frustrated, you know, with guitar, how it tuned, you know. So I wanted to have it. It's a must. If I can think it, it has to be uh, be doable in the reality in some <laughs> way, you know. So yeah. I started to. Uh, work with it and discovered many things on the way, you know, doing the work. I mean, so I was planning to, to do a, write a book about it because this is a really big subject if someone is interested mm -hmm. in the future mm -hmm. to, to read about it in whole. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. So basically you started with like double sided tape on the fretboard, yeah. small piece of wire that you moved mm. around. Yeah. And and then you took fret wire and, and hand bent yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. I do it still today, something, you know, if you're doing a, a new scale or something, you know, like in a prototype, do a prototype or something. But uh, back then, yes, it was, was all hand bending, you know, with tools. And, uh, but it's, it's doable. Yeah, yeah. So then, how how was like the the, the business true temperament the, the company true temperament how mm. uh, how did that happen and then like who who else has been involved on, on the way? <coughs> well, yeah, um, it started uh, with um, uh, back in the late nineties. You know when I used to began to seriously, you know. And I, have, I had a friend uh, that runs run the guitar workshop 
uh, poor guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was uh, hanging there uh, for some reasons, and this is a long story, you know. So <laughs> yes, I just don't want to, don't know how to, you know, <laughs> tell it. But anyway, uh, it started there, and we come, you know, he was interested in my things, and uh, we just decided to that I could spend time in his workshop and begin to do an experimentation and uh, until we had a neck, we just have to try them. Then we just decided to uh, try to see, you know, investigate about the interest of them along other guitar players. So, so, so it started from zero, actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there was no budget and stuff from, you know, it's mm -hmm. a start company that I'm just, just to try to look around the floor about all the screws that we had, put it up in the bench and see what we have. <laughs> yeah. So who, who was the first, like uh, outside yourself, who, who was the first like real player or, or someone famous that, that was attracted to this and yes. tried it. Yeah, it was Steve Y, actually. Oh, yeah. really? Mm -hmm. So he's, yeah. he's been along, er, around for, for that long with yeah, the yeah. company? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that it was uh, like a very beginning. Yeah, it was Thomas Nordig that just contacted, contacted us just to ask if Steve was oh, able yeah, yeah, to yeah, try yeah. it. Yeah. So. yeah, Thomas has a very open mind. He's, yeah, yeah, he's he's, yeah. He always yeah, wants to, to try yeah. stuff. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we had it. So Steve have, have had it on the guitars for quite a long time. Now. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's it's very cool. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so, what, what what do you think that? What do you think is 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 the main reason that uh, more people aren't buying into this concept? It's, uh, it's in general, general is quite conservative, cons conservative uh, um, business. This, yeah, with yeah, guitar yeah. and stuff. And then, and the other thing is that it looks funny. You know? mm -hmm. So it's it's nothing that is discovered that it's nothing that you sell to to just show a picture because those questions rise. You know, so oh, it must be difficult to bend on that guitar and. Uh, yeah, got to yeah. play and stuff. So it's have to come in the have to come in a situation that you that the customer actually can try one. Yeah, and yeah. we didn't have any resources you know, to to send guitars of the world like uh, stuff to to make that happen. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. So it's uh, this takes a, takes a really long time to try to get a new thing. Yeah, in this yeah. segment, yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. I, I think for for us at, at Stramberg, we it, it's such a good match because we already do something different. So mm -hmm. adding true temperament doesn't look out of place at all. It, it mm -hmm. looks natural. And, and I mm -hmm. mean, take take this this eight string. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it it just looks. I think it just looks awesome. Mm -hmm. And th these are the old nice. the old style frets that I wanted to. Um, mm -hmm to show, I, I think the camera can probably pick that up. Um, so these these were made from, um, I think it's it's a silicon bronze yeah. alloy. Yes. Um, so these were like cast, the, yeah, the same casting. way you make mm. um, like tin soldiers, right? Uh, not not Similar? That's, that simple, this is quite a little, little more complicated, you know. <laughs> okay. It's like actually the same way that you're doing a gold tooth. You know, ah, <laughs> so it's it's another remnant from <laughs> yeah. Now it was not it was a, that that company that I contacted back then. Yeah. You know, using a, using that method of uh, doing castings. Uh huh. And uh, yes, it was really good alloy. Also, the silicon bronze because uh, it's really hard and durable. Yeah, it's the same yeah. materials that you're doing uh, like uh, propellers for big ships and stuff. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, and bearings, and bushings, and stuff. But nowadays, uh, what we're doing here now is the stainless steel. 
Das ist äh, äh, CNC Machine, you know, with a CNC Machine, each one. Yeah. Yeah, because the uh, the old style frets, you you would mill, you would you would mill the slot, and and then you have had to press these in like a conventional. Yeah, the fret. old ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and mm -hmm. and they had obviously tolerances in the thickness of the fret itself. Yeah, it's and, the way on the installation yeah, method. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and these are are precision milled, mm -hmm. then, rather than than cast. Mm -hmm. So they they come out. Yes. Exactly the right uh, dimensions. Yeah, and then yeah. you basically you cut these slots so they're the exact dimension of the fret, mm. and and you almost drop it in rather than press it. Yeah, it's uh, it's not not drop. Like, no, but <laughs> it's have, have really good good uh, tolerance, you know, so it fits really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah they I mean, I mean, they're. They're amazing. If 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 you have experiences in, in the old True Temperament, which which was, I mean, it it does what it says on the box, but um, I mean, they they would when you polish them, they they um, I don't know what the word is, but they kind of they stain after a while, or they they like change color. Oh, the silicone so, bronze. Yeah. Yeah. So it's yeah. some oxide, you know that. Exactly up, oxide. Yeah. yeah. So it's. But it's the same thing on like copper nickel fret standard, you know, materials. It's the same thing. Yeah. It's, but it's a little bit different color, color in it. Yeah. More silvery, but. So it needs, some after a while, if you have, would like them to shine, to use the steel wool, just yeah. to, to yeah. bring up, yeah. to take away the oxide yeah. and build up. But this, I mean, this this is next level. I mean, it's it's <coughs> yeah much from mm. more slippery to to play yeah. and it's and, really um, good material, you know. Yeah, yeah. And it doesn't wear out. No, it's a, yeah, it was a really you know, durable fret. Yeah, fret alloy is too, you know, yeah. stainless. Yeah, exactly. Let's see yes. um, if we have any questions. Getting old, so let's put these on. Um, let's let's begin here, Armando. We we kind of discussed this ar already. Armando says, "How complex is the construction of such frets? What does it entail to produce them, and what does it entail on the fretboard to to fit them in?" Um, we basically covered that, but I I've, I've yet to see it. it it's a mystery to me. How they actually mill them? Uh, okay. Because I'm I'm mm. a mechanical engineer, mm. and I know enough from like making guitars that mm. the complexity is usually to come up with the workflow mm. and like the the fixtures to hold things down mm. as you do certain operations. I think and this, I, this is uh, a work of art. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, it's been a lot of work, you know, to do, to develop. It. Uh, also, also with the new press now, with the milling, you know, and the CNC, so, so set it up in the CNC, and, yeah, and everything. So it's like a. And it's a Swedish what? company that that mills them. Yeah, and they yeah. that do kind of aerospace and and mm -hmm. marine mm -hmm. uh, type yeah. stuff. So that's really skillful people there, you know. So we used to manage to solve, you know, all the setup and the CNC and stuff. Yeah. That we do it. So it, uh, so it, it's a bit neat today. Yeah. And obviously, 3D CAD and um, mm. basically, since since you have the the exact dimensions of the frets, you can cut the corresponding like fret slots. Mm. Exactly, with mm. um, just high tolerances. Mm. But it's, I guess it's, it's, it's a complex matter to really um, discuss. But uh, let's see here. Alan Marcus, who you know, he's. Yeah, he's Alan. <laughs> <laughs> he says he's. <laughs> his, his guitar has taken some damage over the years. Uh, can't play it much anymore. Excited for the stainless version. He's he's the reason for for us like getting to know each other um, oh, yeah. because he yeah. he visited here in Uppsala and we hung out and he disappeared to Stockholm for a day and then he came home and said I met Anders 
from True Temperament, he's going to make an A-string calibration for us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that yes. was fun yeah. times. Um, let's see. Uh, Christian says, I, I play my TT Stramberg all the time and I really love it. I have absolutely no problem adapting to the frets and absolutely no issues bending. Only problem is that all my other guitars sound really out of tune now. Mm. Yeah. <coughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> yes. But it's a, it's a thing, you know, that uh, human being, or like you said, if you're used to a good thing, it's real hard to, you know, go back to something. You know? Have yeah. a new car, have to go back in the old car. It's, it's really, you know, not so funny. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Darren asked uh, a question Does the TT frets function differently when you change the tuning? like drop C, for example. Uh, I think that's probably one of the more common questions. Yeah, 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 I have a lot of customers, many years to use, like you tune down, like a drop on, on, the, on the, you know, the thick string. So it's a tune the other guitar, doesn't matter, can't do it. Can't tune, it. I have like a Matthias E.A. Eklund, uh, one of uh, big customer, you know, for, to me. He used a lot of bunch of different, you know, alternative tunings on the guitar. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, what, uh, the only th limit that I used to say that you know, band between the B and G string should be a, a made a third. If you tune it like in a in, in a fourth or something, you know, it doesn't you know correspond so so well. So uh -huh. it's the only thing. I see. Yeah. Right, but I, I I haven't been able to wrap my head around like how how the different tunings since since you compensate for the intervals mm. in the scale not being equal. If if you change the tuning, aren't you like moving the intervals that are incorrect? No, if you uh, if I, I understand you correctly, is so if you just tune the whole guitar like down uh, one step. Mm. or a half step or whatever they have level to C or C standard or whatever it works it's all about you know if you set up your guitar to work as good as possible you have to make the adjustments on the, on the whole guitar in general you know to make it you know function well mm -hmm. so so cool. like any guitar yeah so Leo says any issues for blue struck player band strings a lot Nope. You won't notice. It's truly, it's, it, yeah, just works. And that's, I mean, that, that's the fascinating thing too. When, when you look at how, how these are bent and it doesn't make the guitar sound out of tune, it, it makes it more sound more in tune. And a, a regular guitar with straight frets, I mean, it's you clearly hear a difference, and you clearly hear that it's not perfect. But you'd think that that there was more a, a more drastic difference, actually. Um, I mean, when if you start out as a guitar builder and and you cut the slots of a fretboard uh, manually. Um, I mean, I don't know how, how out of tune it would be if you like, cut a slot a, a tenth wrong. It, it depends on where on the fretboard. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, there, I guess the relative error grows. The, the, the higher up you get, yeah, yeah. the error will yeah, be yeah. more. Yeah. more. More pitch change, you know. Per distance, you know, up in the last octave. Yeah, so. yeah. And you, you also mentioned when when we mm. we, we talked yesterday that um, you think this this works well with the twenty five and a half inch scale on on the low E and twenty five on on the high E. Mm. Um, ha have you noticed anything like a? a What's the difference between one that, that is a conventional 25 and a half inch? And this one? Yeah. 
Yeah, because you know it's shorter on the on the treble side. It makes that you know like a little foil bend, like it's uh, like if you, you, have, you you don't have to bend it so far to reach the pitch mm -hmm. you know, because yeah. the string is shorter. That's one thing. You know. Yeah. So uh, another thing is that with the Little bit slightly, yeah, like this 25 and a half here, you know, you have same tension like on a regular guitar, mm. and a little bit more or like less tension here because it's yeah. shorter. But the other way is also it, so if you so it you don't, don't have to take the strings too far in the bends. Uh -huh. So a little bit yeah. difference is really noticeable yeah. on this. <sighs> yeah, so it's, you notice it, it, it's tangible like from, from playing, but do, do you also hear, uh, are you now at the point where you can almost hear like a different timbre of a string depending on the scale length? It depends on from guitar to guitar. Yeah. Like, I can't say that, you know, I can notice everything. I can't promise you that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But do, do do you think, because I, I think the, the original um, invention, so to speak, of, of fan frets mm. that, that Ralph Novak came up with, yeah. that was based on the theory that th there's this wolf tone of, of the strings that's only related to the length of the string, not the thickness, not the pitch. So by making the strings different length, you would eliminate that mm. and the guitar would sound better. Do you think that has merit? No, I don't. So, so fan also, frets yeah. sound better for like no, I better don't know. I didn't hear that explanation before, actually. But, mm, so, right. but uh, a wolf note. This is a old expression from you know, the dark ages, <laughs> from uh, with uh, when they used a specific te temperament. It's called a mean tone temperament. Mm. So. Uh, in that system, it it accord like the l l like to call it that used to call it like a wolf tone in specific places because that temperament was uh, based on really per, pure uh, major thirds. So to create create a temperament that is fully chromatic in that one, you know that temperament, you have to have thirty one frets. Mm -hmm. So they had a fifth that was too big, so they mm -hmm. gave the expression a wolf tone, wolf note. You right. know. So I think Frank maybe borrowed it from that, you know. Mm -hmm. But it's, uh, yeah, I didn't hear any wolf note, you know, no. uh, in that matter, you know, on the guitar. Mm -hmm. So my exp my opinion about fan frets is quite really good, you know, because it's basically in my world nothing about intonation. It's, it's about you know in the first place. It's about this uh, string tension, yeah. you know, on the bass, we got more compact, high tension on the, on the bass, you know, side. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. Yeah, it works. <laughs> Let's see who else has any questions. Um, He says that book would be really interesting. Sorry? The the book you mentioned. Uh, oh yeah, before. okay, thank you. So thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, this would be really, you know, satisfying because I have so much to tell <laughs> basically, but yeah. every like a uh, pod or interview I do, this is, uh, you don't have, I don't have the time to talk about it, you know, mm -hmm. in, in the whole, so. Yeah. Because I did, I did this journey, you know, like a, like a, you know, common guitar player. And you just happen to do something about, you know, the, the intonation. And with no knowledge, you want to see what I, you know, just end up with. Just the, the path there, you know, the, the way. So, yeah. so many things there, you know, so... So good, so I feel that, you know, it so really would be nice to, to write that down somewhere, you know. Yeah. To yeah. But did, did you, so when you... You had this, like, den dental technician type, yeah. work mm. and then you had this idea and you started working on that mm. and and you met Paul Guy yeah and so did you then like evolve into 
a general purpose guitar tech and did this like at the same time or, or have you always like focused on, on true temperament? Um, uh, or or the I, innovation aspects of it or, or yeah. were you like I mean, just a guitar this, tech also? There's so many good luthiers around the world, yeah. guitar techs and stuff. I, did, I began with this because was nobody could help me with what I wanted to do. <laughs> so yeah. I just had to build it myself. Yeah. So I started there and you know, so you learn things during the years. Yeah. 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 Did, did you ever build a, a complete guitar? Yeah, yeah, like yeah many times. Loose yeah, many, loose many. Materials. I had big guitars, yeah. Yes, so, and basses too. Yeah. yeah. This customer that you know show, so shows up and have different you know the own specific needs yeah. and scale length and you know yeah. and every aspect you can think about. Yeah. Is so is is the problem of uh, of these like out of tune intervals? Is, is it more of a problem on bass than guitar? Or, it depends. Or you know what you use it till. Yeah, you use it too. I mean, yeah. so you have Jonas Hellborg, is one Swedish uh, bass player that you just play like classical music on the bass guitar. Mm. So for him, you know, it's really suitable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, it depends, I mean, yeah. So I used to say uh, with the guitar, with, with the, the fret system that I just invented here, the, the optimum way is that, you know, that a person that is in, might be interested in it, try to get some kind of opportunity to try one, yeah. know, to see what it will do for that person. Yeah. I mean, I don't say that Steve I and, and play false, you know, with straight frets, but this mm -hmm. gives a, another opportunity to choose different voicings and stuff. It gives yeah. a little bit like inspiration boost. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think, I think what well, you told me that with Alan Horsworth when he was in studio and played. Yeah. What did he say after when he came out from there? You have this chat with him. Well, yeah, he 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 was talking about it like the 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 piano like uh, sustain mm -hmm. and and also in, interestingly about uh, speaking about the bass, he he had to um, he would can't remember exactly now, but I think he had to detune the bass two cents or something to play in tune with the True Temperament guitar. Oh, okay. um, it was some something along the lines, but mm. but yeah, he he did mention that that this was. Um, I mean, the the, the instrument the, the instrument gives you inspiration by how it behaves mm. and 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 how it interacts with with you as a player, and. Uh, that's what I always say also when, when this whole tone wood debate, whether the, if, if the wood makes any difference to the sound or not, mm. then maybe it doesn't make a sound difference to what you hear through the speaker. With a lot of distortion, a, a guitar pickup with very poor dynamics, maybe, maybe someone listening to an exact tone that comes out of the speaker, maybe they don't hear a difference. But you, the player, mm. you will interact with the instrument differently. Mm. Uh, and I definitely think that True Temper will, will, it's a part of that. Just how the, the tactile feel of the guitar as you play it, how it mm. vibrates mm. against your body, okay. that, that creates inspiration and makes you play differently. Mm. And people will hear that. So it's, yeah. yes, these small things. But who, so uh, we, we did have a question here. Um, how many brands have been working with TT as of today? Um, in, I guess we kind of covered this in what sense is it difficult to sell as a good replacement. But um, so are, there are some, some other brands that, that have fitted uh, True Temperament on, on yeah, the guitars. Yeah, just, yeah, more or less. I mean, I mean, we are just currently just working with different, you know, manufacturers. Yeah. And I have did like a couple of guitars here, a couple of guitar necks there, you know, for different brands during the years, you know, they tried it out. And it was also, the, the, the thing is that you, with the manufacturing, that 
they have a way of doing it and to try to implement something new is it's uh, costly and it takes time and it's best especially with the old you know system that uh, with the old yeah. press that we, we spoke about you know yeah that's the that's the one of the reason that you that I did the development on the new one yeah. is that this is more easy to or like more suitable for a factory to actually produce mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that that is uh, the major goal with it yeah yeah and um, so it's uh, basically so those different guitar player that you know are, have endorsement different brands we have been working with them it's been more or less like for a couple of necks and stuff but we didn't do jet any big like numbers mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so i've been played around you know from here to there and see you know but i think uh, it will will be visible on the markets soon yeah. from different, you know, manufacturers, brands. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. Because I, I I think something that um, if if you're just a player and maybe you've ordered a custom guitar and worked with an actual luthier uh, who builds the guitar and understands exactly what's going on, that's entirely different to uh, serial production of guitars, which is it's a factory. It's factory workers who clock in in the morning, mm. do what they're told, and they go yeah. home in the evening. Um, they can become very skilled, um, but they don't necessarily like understand what they're doing. So it's it, it certainly requires um, a mindset in in the management of the company mm. to take this on board mm. and, and go through the work um, and. Something we we've, we've gone through in in very close partnership with with you at uh, at PT Court. So it's mm. it is a learning curve, but um, yeah, it's worth it. Mm. Um, see if we have any more questions. Kevin says TT Strammers are absolutely amazing. Um, so Kevin has recorded a bunch of videos. Uh, um, demo videos for our guitars. Oh, okay, I'll, I'll nice. Play them later. They're, they're not live yet, but they're mind blowing. Okay, great. Um, um, Armando says, is it possible to retrofit a neck with TT on guitars that do not have them, or would they, that have issues consequences? So I think, I guess this this goes two ways. So for Strandberg guitars, we we're not currently at least planning on, on like offering replacement necks um, but let's let's ask more um, generally I think you've you've spent many years actually replacing fretboards on existing guitars yeah yeah it's, it's the money many set neck guitars you know that you have to be you have like change the fretboard on. yeah yeah and then we have like uh, re replacement necks for uh, Telus, Telus, uh, Telecaster, and uh, Stratocaster, mm -hmm. heavy guitars, mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, yeah, the the, pre the the conversion, I would say, like the conver convert a guitar for it to to a TT guitar, is require like a a fretboard change, yeah. change to fretboard. Yeah. I do many acoustic guitar, steel string, nylon string, yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. Gibson, I like Gibson set neck guitar and every every set neck guitar, and, you know. Yeah. And I think now, especially with, with these new frets, that gives like luthiers and other builders, mm. it's much easier for them to do this. So mm. I, I think you, you, I mean, the company True Temperament now, mm. you're working on a model where you can have like licensed yeah. uh, installation mm. shops yes. uh, around the world. Yeah. So that, that should make it more uh, accessible to to all of you that that have a, uh, an existing guitar that you want converted to to true temperament so hopefully there will be someone in, um, in in your neighborhood so you you don't have to send it to Stockholm and mm. get Anders time <laughs> actually we have a, a, a company in Texas in Austin that oh yeah, yeah. TT Texas yeah right. TT Texas that uh, yeah, that I'm involved with too. I'm not there, but we have another guy that's named Tony Nobles, really skillful mm. 
uh, luthier that right, are yeah. doing uh, uh, fretboard replacements, like OTT conversions yeah. Yeah, in Austin, right. in the Wimbley, outside Austin, a little bit. Nice. Uh, let's see. Oliver asked about string gauges, and we, we kind of uh, touched on this. It mm. handles all string gauges. Uh, mm. You still have to intonate the guitar as, yes. as a conventional guitar, even due to TT, but mm. no problem. Um, TT Bowden Prog Bass. Yeah, we should do the bass eventually. Um, Sebastian says, what if I go from standard tuning open E and another tuning is on the fly? It needs extra adjustment. I, I think we can kind of cover that too, but yeah, the, you don't have to like change the, the, the intonation necessarily for, for an open tuning. TT will kind of handle that if, if you change yes, tuning so, on the fly. Yeah, 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 yeah I mean, it depends. Like I said before, <laughs> yeah, Klum, you have uh, the guitar he plays, uh, Floyd on it, you know, so yeah. he has to have like uh, 10 guitars, but he uses a lot of different alternative tunings. Mm, so. Yeah, yeah. so, yeah, you can tune it, but the, the intonation, I mean, if we, we do it really perfect, like, is, is basically doesn't exist an instrument that one fits all like you, that's possible like like a magic doing it, like things from you know here from there you know on the fly but you of course can tune it and we want to have it really perfect of course it's, it's possible to do small small like really small nice small adjustments you yeah, know to make yeah. it even better of yeah. course. because uh, I mean classical guitar players yeah they will they will tune the guitar for each song, uh, I mean, the, the, they'll adjust the, the pitches slightly uh, depending on mm. uh, like which um, which scale the, the song is in. But the, this the, the Formula One true temperament mm. that's like general purpose. So regardless of which mm. uh, which like. Yeah. Um, my brain's losing words right now, um, but it, all, no, it, it always works. Yes, yes, of course. You have this, uh, the thing is the most common is uh, like uh, classical guitar playing. What I've seen them doing is that they used to, if they do like a drop D or something. And uh, but the thing is like uh, one thing that we can just have a glimpse on is that you know. Uh, with the guitar, for nowadays that you we did uh, seven string, mm -hmm. we did eight string guitar, and we begin to get into a, a really wide range, like a wide spectrum of uh, playable notes. Mm -hmm. And one thing is that <clears throat> what I have built in on the eighth, so it's a little bit on the seven, and, and the eighth string is a little bit flatness in the bass because uh, because of the inner harmonicity, you know, in the string. When you in the in the low, one. like if you compare it to, compare to a piano, from the mid range to bass, like if it should sound right in the air, you have to make it a little bit a little bit flat in the bass, you know, to make mm -hmm. it you know some sounds good. In, yeah. When you just listen to it in reality, if you just, you just go like stick on the tuner and just tune a low bass note like exactly mm -hmm. on the frequency, you play like two or three octaves away from it, up, you know, it will sound sharp in the bass. So you have to, yeah, you can make the high note a little bit higher, too, <laughs> yeah. it's a relative way yeah. to do it. Yeah. But it's, it's a little bit inbuilt in the guitar, too, because we're reaching that segment, you know, yeah, with yeah. the eight-string guitar. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you're going like, a, like in a low E or a F sharp or something, or whatever you tune it to. So. To be interpreted, you know, when you do a recording and you play like uh, to uh, make a correspondence, cor correspondence with a high note, so so um, should be a little bit adjustment there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. but so this is a big subject too to just go yeah. in, you know. So you just want to have it small, like we just want to mention it fast. Yeah, yeah. 
I, I mean, I, I know it's, it's, it's a lot of like studio techs wet a dream to have a true temperament guitar with the Evertune bridge. And it's, it's something that's, I mean, it's, it's always in tune. Essentially, I, I think a lot of studios actually do that. And, and if you come mm. in to record, mm. they just give you that guitar, mm. and that's the one you have to use. <laughs> yeah, it saves time in the yeah. studio. Yeah. <laughs> Which is, it's, mm. it's, it's weird to me, because we, we talked all about this, how the instrument inspires you to play mm. differently. And if, if you have one guitar, and then the studio tech hands you another one, and, mm. and that's the one you have to record on. What does that do to the album? But I guess that's that's a different conversation. Mm. Uh, let's see. If we have any more questions? Um, do we intonate on the twelfth fret for TT? And I guess yes. <coughs> yeah, I can do it. You know, my own way of doing it uh, is that I used to put tuner uh, that I use. Uh, Strobe tuner uh, from uh, Sonic Research uh, in the chromatic mode. So I used to try it like randomly, you know, different places. Or mostly I begin, you know, so that the op octave, like when I to have it in the chromatic and play like a G or something, you know, it's sh and I move up upwards up the neck and um, uh, and then I do that as adjustment and I reshake down here, you know. So it's the more right you get it here up in the last octave, it would be a double so right here, you see, because you have the, 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 the um, what do you call it in English? Uh, the oscillation of the string goes on the half speed here, mm -hmm, if you compare mm -hmm, it up mm -hmm. here. Yeah, yeah. So I just check randomly. Round, you know, to see. Just, I'm just not focused on one note all the time. It just could be good to just check like in different position. Just to put in chromatic, you know, the tuner. Mm -hmm. That's how I do it. But with with the tuner, where you have then program the offsets, or is it just any chromatic tuner? No, you have to, of course, uh, put in the um, offset. Yeah, have yeah, a program yeah, just for, yeah. for the TT guitar. Yeah. So, uh, or else if you ha oh sorry sorry I just want to, I just want to mm. finish. If you use a, a regular tuner that's not program, that is like a for standard equal temperament, then you have to use um, pick one note like E for for instance, so just or A or something else and they play. Just A on every every position around the neck, and you can compare it that way. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, because uh, so a lot of a lot of tuners have a way to to program in offsets for each note, and mm -hmm. some tuners have built-in functions to actually load the true temperament. I think they call it sweetener. Some is mm -hmm. it Strobosoft that have a tuner. Um, I don't know. I have, really. I have an app on my phone. Um, <coughs> I Strobosoft by Peterson, and it says, yeah, it's it says sweetened th1. Okay. If we can show that to the camera. No, not necessarily. Uh, it's out of focus. Anyway, um, yeah. So this you can. It it costs another few bucks, but then um, they okay. have it so so you can just download or um, from their mm, okay. website for for True Temperament. Okay. Yeah. Um, so the, the the quick way to tune is to have a tuner that knows what True Temperament is. Yeah. Uh, or uh, that yes. you can program uh, yes. yourself. Yes. So. Um, that's cool. Or or just use the, the method that, that you just mentioned. Pick a note A. Mm. Oh, yeah. Play that on, on every string. Mm. Uh, and it should always be in tune. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's see. No more questions right now. Mm. So I know um, 
you're working also on on other inventions is is there something that you 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 can or, or want to discuss <clears throat> yeah yeah is yeah it's no not so big secrets but uh, <laughs> yeah so, uh, so i work in yeah, another way it's a really simple thing on the back side of the of the profile of the neck i have like uh, rotated channels that, that goes along i call it the vent neck so it's like ventilated neck you know mm -hmm. so you save the profile if we do it on this guitar we have the same like profile but something that you have uh, air channels in mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I got the idea, you know, from uh, quite many years ago. We actually, when we used to order next neck stocks from Walmart, we had a collaboration with them, and they yes, just uh, delivered them, you know, unblackered. So if you're going to, if you had to, like in some, you know, circumstances, use the warranty, then you have to uh, have it lacquered before. So right, it's, yeah. The man who doesn't want to have it, he just don't have like a wood feeling that it may, might get stuck in, in, in the lacquer, you know, with, with nitro lacquer stuff, uh, la uh, nitro finish. So. It's the <laughs> blend in Swedish here, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. but anyway, so 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 to to get good uh, both thing, you know, ha have it lacquer and also have like it more, you know less uh, less friction in it yes yeah, so yeah. i used to decide to do i did it on my own guitar also like but i didn't show it yet like so yeah, it's just a really yeah. simple thing and also working with the bridge it's um also like a self-tuning uh, uh tremolo bridge i've been working with I in, on, i've been doing that in seven years i believe we have uh, developed it it's, yeah. it's still not like 100 percent ready it took uh, took a very long time. You usually do that with, with you know, if you uh, try to develop something. Yeah. And you want to have it really working in a great way. It, it take time. Yeah. And, yeah. And do, uh, how, how do you find uh, in inspiration generally? Do, does it come easy to you that you, that you can like have an open mind and, and yes. innovate? Uh, everything that I just come up with, you know, so it's, it's things that I want to have on my guitar. Yeah. So, but then, you know, so others won't like, would like it, won't like to have it, and I could like offer it maybe. Yeah. This is a thing, that I just, when I started with it, it was for my own reasons, you know, I hadn't done it thought about, you know, to sell it to somebody else, you know. But later on, you know, when I just get in touch with Paul, Paul Guy, that I mentioned earlier, then was another thing that you know, so, okay, we can see about interest. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. But I, I, I was thinking, I mean, I, I find that uh, I'm always busy like running the company, and, and then uh, I have a hard time being creative or, mm. or find inspiration because I'm, I'm just too busy yeah. doing mm. stuff. Yes, uh, depends, you know. It's, uh, People, you know, quite often complain that they you know, have complaints about the hard to reach me. Yeah. So I just turn off the signal on my cell phone and just put it away because it's really annoying to get disturbed. Yeah. When you're yeah. working, you know, with with the tools for making art. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So and develop things. So it's the way that. Uh, what I do, yeah, yeah, and then I have to take the consequences of that <laughs> later on. <laughs> but I think yeah. now it's it's. I mean, I've I've we've been working together for for many years, and I think it's it's, it's cool. You you have a good team put together now for mm. for True Temperament, so it, it has momentum. Even, yeah. even if you're not like answering the phone or email, it it it's, it's an actual company with people who. Yeah. Yes. Who, who run the, the day to day? I'm not alone uh, no. anymore in the company. Yeah. You know, so I'm doing what I think I do best. You know, just I believe so anyway. You know, yeah. Working with things, yeah. you know, develop. And uh, yeah, uh, as long as it works for us, yeah, for us you know, mm -hmm. every, you know, the collaboration. You know. Now I'm here and we talk. Yeah, yeah, it's really cool. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's see if there's a last question because we're on the hour. Um, nope. Um, 
it's actually a perfect time to wrap yeah. up. Mm. Um, yeah. It was very good to have you here. Thank you very much. And, nice to be uh, here. Interesting yeah. to, to learn, learn more about the, the background of, of the true temperament. And mm. I hope that uh, you that, that have been watching um, have also found it interesting. And um, this video remains on our, on our Facebook page. We'll upload it to YouTube. Um, it's going to live on our, our YouTube channel as well for posterity. Um, keep asking questions there if, if you want to. And um, we'll try and respond in, in the comments section. Um, and as I mentioned before in these live streams, we have a dedicated email address called stranded at strandbergguitars.com. Um, so feel free to email suggestions uh, about different show formats or what you thought about this one. And um, we'll do our best to, to incorporate that in, in future streams. Mm -hmm. So for now, tuning out. Thanks a lot to everyone that's been watching. Oh. Thanks, Jan Anders. Thank you very much. And uh, you. see you soon. Yeah.